Hello, brothers and sisters of the world. Thank you for your patronage to my postings and my purpose at this time. I would like to invite my viewers to begin this video by joining me in 10 seconds of silence till we go inside ourselves and honor our own spirituality. Thank you for sharing this moment with me. Thank you for sharing that moment with me. And thank you very much for your time and consideration and interest in my life's work. I love you all. Thank you for learning and respecting the English language and continuing to help us connect the world peacefully with language. I have to say a lot of things in this video that may seem harsh, but I know you understand that there are harsh things happening in the world. You need to pay mind to my tone and understand that I'm trying to do this respectfully, but ultimately there are some harsh things that need to be said. And no matter what you think about this video or anything that I say, unfortunately for me, this is the truth from my perspective. However, if you can hold maturity throughout this video, it could come with a lot of healing for the adults and the children. Respectfully, practically, and realistically. Gracias a Dios por este momento. I need to start by talking about the general governing process. Um, process is the people in poverty sacrifice luxury on the understanding that they're properly taxed income and the efforts between the people and the government um, keep the numerical governing at a reasonable degree of uh, achievement for the average person and that's just a very mature understanding. Um, I can't really see how it would be logical that the people would want to work for uh, a currency that has them working seven days a week and still feeling like they need to work more. I feel like it's intuitionally understood as human beings that if an individual works their share of hours in a week and pays their taxes um well they should by all rights be able to afford a very simple single dwelling for themselves with whatever they need to be comfortable and we all know that is not even entertained in 2022 and you're probably thinking, just get with the times. I need to say very respectfully, that is part of the mindset that's developed due to the lack of protection over so many years. Thank you for receiving that maturely. I watched my grandfather suffer the economy. And my father had a worse time. And now my father didn't get any of the stuff he really paid into, the protection for him and my grandfather. He paid into it his whole life. He didn't really get it. And now I am worried about my children, but not at a degree where I'm only worried about my children, but of course I love my children with all my life force. So thank God for my children. But it's, it's from a perspective that is worried about your sons and your daughters and, and 
No, everybody. This, this is not okay. I need to speak about the process. Uh, now, we know in poverty that the top is going to grow faster than the bottom. It shouldn't grow too quickly because then we could be just, you know, working, doing our thing. We're still struggling, but we're okay because, you know, it's just life and government is people, go people, government relationships should be maintained, right? But when a pandemic hits and we're met with this, well, that's very harmful to the people. And that's exactly what we're experiencing. That's not my rule. We're supposed to be getting protected and we are definitely not protected with our gas prices and everything. And I can get into it. And honestly, I'm trying to help everybody. If you think I'm trying to take your job, you're wrong. I'm trying to save your job. This is the detail of the job. And when the pandemic hits, the economy should ideally be a healthy economy going into the pandemic. So it shouldn't really rattle the people too much. And we should be able to come out the other end okay maturely and then kind of build from there but in that gray period there was big changes made from individuals in position to do so to help aid and protect the, the citizens and after watching what my family tree has gone through uh we were met with threats to freeze our bank accounts uh, our gas prices, our, our pipeline out west. Um, it's like, like I said, I could, I could go on and on. And at the same time, I don't really want to because it's awkward because I don't really want the position, but I can see it clear as day. Maturely, I feel compelled towards food and human body and health. And that is what I want to do. I don't want to be doing economy talks largely because it's understood that it gets kind of dangerous but very maturely the people that are in politics that are in those positions it's not a fucking game to them either and their lives are on the line too and I don't know if you can appreciate that but I hope you can because these individuals need compassion. I'm trying to offer them compassion. I hope you can receive my compassion maturely. I really don't have any desire to harm any humans. I really mean that. And even if you think I'm attacking you, I'm not. I'm only talking about the rights of the people. If we are not going to be governed to satisfy the rights of the people, well, how are the people supposed to agree to a governing that isn't satisfying the rights of the people? It's completely illogical. And that's not my rule. And I hope you can receive that maturely because things need to happen. We don't need to be distracted away from our finance and our food. Right now, we need to focus on our finance and our food because that's where the biggest issues are. Globally. I honestly don't feel like my government is going to listen to me. I hope they do. But very directly, my provincial government doesn't have the funding to properly pave our roads and they really don't have it. Our provincial government doesn't have the means to protect us in the way that we're paying for. And the banks don't have the cash to give us back our honest life earnings. That's a serious offense to the people's practical protection. Cash in God we trust is that's the people's practical protection from corrupted online currencies. Well, the bank can't even give it back to us. So it's going and in current circumstance, Everybody's just normalized the penalty of financial fees on their guaranteed inadequacies and the cash is just going. That's not protecting the people. 
making the economy to a degree where you can't have a simple living as an individual and you've got to like live with your parents for your life or something to survive. And then a tragedy happens and you're not with your parents anymore. Well, you still have to survive and you can't survive in that economy. That's dangerous. We, we're supposed to be governed towards self-sufficiency and not dependency. And you all know why, and I don't really want to get into it, but obviously a self-sufficient worker that doesn't have to lean on the people that are governing the numbers is going to feel more willing to work more hours and satisfy their government because they want to have a good people government relationship. In the current circumstance, it makes perfect sense that we don't have a healthy people government relationship because when we needed, when it was like this and we needed this, we got that. Well, that does not feel very good. And when our small businesses are gone and we're worried about our children's futures and we're hearing about uh, electric cars, well, their electric cars are great, but we have more important things happening. Where is your focus? It should be on world peace. Because if peace is not the goal, there is zero leniency on the very mature understanding of the severity of the position. It requires maturity. And if you're in government, you should know that. And I believe you know that. I'm not attacking you. I believe you know that. I am not insulting your intelligence. And I don't want to hurt you. I'm speaking openly about the situation and I know how severe it is and I know how relevant it is and that's the concern. But I really hope that everybody remain calm about it because we don't want to hurt anybody. Including our children. And if you are not concerned about our children, we are. And now we're concerned about you. And I know because I'm not insulting your intelligence, that you understand that. So although I don't expect the FDA to accept my help, and I don't expect the government to accept my help, I would like them to, but I have no reason to believe they're gonna listen to me. They don't listen to anybody else. And that's just being direct. It's an issue. Our health isn't protected and we're in a pandemic and our finances are not protected and we're in a financial crisis and what are we going to do? We're gonna talk about electric cars. We have children we're living in this world. We have businesses that are making our livelihood. We have farmers wanting to feed our families and can't. We're being ignored worldwide. And it's before COVID, even after what I've seen with my family tree, I have no choice. They're in position. I have to just trust that they're going to protect us if something happens. And COVID was the first time that my brothers and sisters in poverty were supposed to be protected by the money currency since getting on it in 71. And that's not my rule. It's just the truth. And I've told lies and you've told lies and everybody's told lies. And we're always going to, in, to some degree, because lies exist. On an international degree, you cannot lie about protecting our children. And if you do, it completely goes against the whole purpose of even creating government. Because the whole point of even having government is to protect us. And modernly, a lot of people don't even expect it. And that's what I'm saying. When we don't expect our rights, we need our rights. And if you're for our rights, you honor the rights. If you don't, we use the rights. And that's not my rule. That's protecting our children. It's very mature and logical. And it's very necessary. going to take another moment. Thank you for understanding. Very modest suggestions.
to a very caring government would be something like this. Knowing that in this circumstance, the bottom is going gonna, is gonna to suffer a lot, but the top is going to have to sacrifice too. Because in that circumstance, everybody maturely sacrifices. We are sacrificing. And everybody should be maturely sacrificing. And in this situation, the protection means that the suffering comes from the top where it doesn't usually. And it doesn't usually because it's earning its way. But again, when the offset gets to that degree, the whole point is that in those special circumstances, something's figured out to close the gap. And it doesn't have to go from this to this, but it can't go that way. It should be coming in. And so in that, for example, you don't need internet to survive as a human being, but you do need internet to survive as a modern individual in our civilized society. Um, so in that, you do need internet to be modern, and I understand the internet companies are making a lot of money in internet, and it's a great service, and I'm not knocking them, but in this circumstance, it's kind of hard to expect the people that are having trouble feeding their families and losing their businesses to be paying for the internet that we need to even go online and use their currency to pay our bills with. We need internet or we can't even get online to pay our bills and a lot of places aren't even accepting cash because it's going anyway. And so we need to be able to get online and do our financial dealings in modern times. It's just the way it is. It doesn't matter. That's the circumstance right now. We have to do that. And so... We do, but the internet could be given to the public and factored in in some way to aid those companies, but not to a pampering degree because those companies themselves are in strong standing for a little bit of a, of a loss, a little bit of a sacrifice. Now, we can't feed our children and we can work seven days a week. And you know that's the case. That's a very severe situation. So we don't want that to occur. And we don't want it to go on longer than need be. So something like the internet is a very mature suggestion in that something could be figured out for the internet companies, but ultimately it would be about the relief on the people. And then everybody would just have internet and it may only save them $10. It may save them $100. I don't know. Everybody's in different circumstances, but ultimately it wouldn't really matter. It'd be a modern suggestion for aid to the people. And I have a lot of these type of concepts, but again, I'm not trying to take that position. I'm just trying to offer some clarity. So that is an idea. I don't even expect them to do, but these are the types of things the government would do if they cared about protecting our children because we can't even feed them on seven days work. I've always worked, I've always tried to be self-sufficient. I always paid my taxes. I've never been protected. My car was taken from me, repoed from me. All kinds of things went on in reference to my rights being violated. And you know what? It's not even about me. I can't get to work. How am I going to... If I can't afford internet, how am I going to pay my bills? And this is very serious to me because I've always been a financially responsible person. I've always paid my taxes and paid my bills. Before COVID, I had no problems with my car payments. I was after exchanging my car over with, with that company. And I was with that company for a long time, no problems until COVID. But then the government told me I had to stay home and kept hitting me with financial fees. And 
the aid that they were giving me was drastically less because I was so far in the minuses by the time I got it. And the thing is, I don't want to talk too much about my own situation, but that is very much so the situation in poverty. I don't share in, in, the, in the health, so obviously my clarity is, is, is enhanced, respectfully, but I do share in the financial situation. That is very much so what's happening. I lost a bank account due to late fees when the government told me to stay home. The government told me to stay home and kept expecting this from me. And I couldn't keep up with it. I was living in poverty. I couldn't work. And now I'm just expected to accept it. Accept what? They're taking everything I have. And I'm trying to maturely speak up because, again, I only explain a little bit of that. It's really embarrassing. I only explain a little bit of that to express the situation. This is what's happening to our brothers and sisters in poverty. And we need somebody maturely speaking up. And that's what I'm doing. And we don't actually expect them to listen to us. And that's very frustrating. But I do have an even more broad suggestion that does actually include everybody. And if the people that are doing the governing thing, I'm attacking them, I'm really not. But I'm including them. Thank you for your maturity and accepting this information. I don't expect it to actually materialize, but I do feel like it could be a good situation, or sorry, a good solution to the situation. Given the fact that the cash has been sucked out, we don't really have it to give back to the people. So logistically, we need an online currency and we need to be careful about it because it's like children's futures. So, what I would suggest, whether I was involved in it or not, I still think it's a good idea. If I was involved in it or not, I wouldn't even want anything for it. Because afterwards, I could just come back and afford to pay my bills. See, the gap is so large. It just needs to do this. And the cash has been sucked up, so we need an online currency. But very maturely, with the situation that I saw for my family tree to now, and the concern for the children and my clarity, and the relevancy to the situation, I don't want to say it, but... I feel like we need to maturely form an online world relief fund at this time. And in doing so, I have very fair and logical suggestions to the situations and it is considering everybody in the situation, but very maturely, a government that does not protect the people is a fraudulent government. So in that, the people have to assess that maturely and lead by peaceful example. And that is what we are trying to do. So we don't want to hurt anybody but we need some kind of financial, large financial relief so we can just keep living. We just need to keep living without all the mental stress of all the numbers. Because it's driving us crazy and we work too much and we need that relief. We need our society. We need our civilization. But it needs to be modern and very maturely. When you listen to the concerns of the children... One of the biggest concerns is that there's no modern solutions and there's nothing that's really making the college students or, you know, the high school students comfortable with trusting this whole situation. So, again, we have no reason to believe that that's going to make a difference. So, very maturely, something like that would offer opportunities to adjust things to a modern situation very maturely 
back in the day, 40 hours a week was expected and you have time with your family. It's not even reasonable these days. And if you were going to actually take that seriously and try to do that, you can't expect to work less than 50 hours a week if you want a comfortable living. You might even have to say 60 very maturely because you want it to crush up, but you can't expect it just to do that. But you need to offer fair exchange rates so we can just breathe. And additionally, it needs to be larger than all the other currencies and offer fair exchange rates to it. So then people will just see that it's a good idea. And when they come to it, they'll have a fair exchange rate and everybody can just breathe. And fair exchange rate means there'll be a fair amount of extra. And if you have a lot extra going in, you'll have a lot extra on the other side. However, there has to be some kind of a limitation because the whole point is that after the transfer, it's going to squeeze up. So you can expect possibly a smaller number, but not a change in status. But the smaller number allows our numbers to get a little bit more fair and just kind of crushes it up a bit. And then in that, we have an online currency that is fair to the people and is planning on protecting the children and protecting the government because we want a strong people government relationship and we can't have that in a situation where our children are not being protected and our small businesses are not being protected. So we need to talk about it maturely and openly. And that's what I'm trying to do. So ultimately, if that was to happen, you would go to a grocery store and still be able to work there and enjoy your work because you can pay your bills. Ultimately, a lot of people don't have problems with their actual work. They have problems with the fact that they can't afford to live on their work. But if they could afford to live on their work because the people were being protected numerically, well, they wouldn't even care about the fact that they work there. They don't have to be on a screen being a super famous person to be happy in their life. But what they do need is a government that cares enough to protect them enough that they can spend time with their family and enjoy family values in exchange for the luxuries of high society. And that's just very mature. So thank you in your maturity to accepting all of this. I feel like I've said a lot, maybe too much, but ultimately I'm speaking with humanity in mind. I'm, I just want healthy children. And ultimately I just want to work with food and health because of my life studies. The suggestions for the economy, by no means do you have to take seriously, but in my current circumstance, I have no reason not to speak up peacefully about it. And that's all I'm doing. So thank you for holding peace and maturity and accepting my information. It is very scary for me to put on camera, but I feel like somebody has to trigger some kind of decisions. It doesn't have to be worst case scenarios. You just have to stay calm. We don't need to think about worst case scenarios. We just need to stay calm and correct it so we can just breathe and keep living. And then we can address the health. Thank God for sharing conscious creation with humans. The gift of conscious creation. I love you all. Thank you for your support and your time. I gotta go. Peace and love to all of God's children, regardless of status, age, gender, geography, or mother tongue, because we're all just human. In God we trust. Thank God again.